in terms of objective kind of testing particularly also via telephone medium as well some people do feel limited in in the way that they can assess patients and obviously at the moment with covid we're dealing with an illness that can have a significant impact on your respiratory system and things i know there's been some recent information about things like the roth test or i believe it's in some places called the eight second test i was wondering if you could talk us through that because i know that you've had a look at this paper and probably understand it a lot better than i do if i'm being honest Right, yeah, so this came up uh, because the Royal College of GPs was saying, is there any evidence-based way of assessing dyspnea over the phone or by video? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, if you had the patient in the room, you would put an oximeter on their finger and you'd measure their PaO2, uh, mm -hmm. and that would be much better. Some patients have got oximeters at home, some have got smartphones that measure oxygen levels, but most of them don't. So. Yeah, we did a big search of the literature, not me, but uh, actually some of my PhD students, and they found a very interesting paper, uh, which we're going to be writing about uh, quite soon, uh, which describes something called the Roth test, R-O-T-H, uh, or the eight second test. So what's that? It's really simple. You get your patient to take a deep breath and then start at number one and count up to 30 or beyond in their native language, and time how long it takes for them to take their first breath. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, London. So, so you count the number of seconds. If the patient takes a breath after less than eight seconds, um, they've got uh, it's a 78% sensitivity of picking up hypoxia below 95% PaO2. If it takes them only five seconds to take that first breath, the sensitivity improves to 91%. So you're basically saying, set your watch and, and count eight seconds. And if the patient's still talking, they're probably all right. Now, that is based on a single study in a single hospital. I think it was from Israel. So it isn't exactly a primary care situation. It wasn't done on the telephone. But mm -hmm. we have found out that uh, some of the paramedic services have been using what they call the eight-second test over the phone uh, for a number of years. So we're hopefully going to be doing a bit of research on this. But uh, so long as you apply it with clinical judgment, I think this eight second test might be quite a useful one to be doing by video and over the phone when you're assessing potentially deteriorating patients with chest symptoms. And I think that's one thing to remember. This, this is a test that potentially could be done over the phone as well, not just by video. Clearly, video gives you a bit more, I think, information in terms of how the patient's coping with it. So you can see them doing the test and obviously their response. And I, I know for me personally, the value of video consultations is, like you said earlier, it's just simply being able to eyeball the patient and have some of that reassurance that many of us as clinicians can have just by having that eyeball picture. Um, I know I, I talk about my own triage skills and often, and I've been doing telephone triage for, for several years. And often in my practice, I will bring about 40% of the patients down to, to the practice, of which a good 20, 30% of those are simply just so we can eyeball the patients because that's all we need to do. Or maybe it's just giving the patient the reassurance that we've seen them, which video can allow that to happen. Yeah, totally, absolutely, yeah. And I, and I think that's one thing that, we are going to see a shift in the way that things work and how practices work and effectively how patients interact with it as well. Um, but having those kind of conclusive kind of tests is useful and also being able to explain to patients how to do simple maneuvers. So, you know, you, can, you could, for example, explain to a patient how to take their pulse. I've done that with certain patients um, over the phone. Obviously, via video, it's a bit easier because you can then show them exactly where you you're can talking demonstrate about. Demonstrate it. Yes. And I think one of the one of the things that is that where video really adds value is if the patient has a device, whether it's an inhaler, a peak flow meter, a blood pressure machine, a thermometer, if you've got a similar and hopefully identical device your end, mm -hmm. and I, I've watched this particularly with specialist nurses where they hold it and they say to the patient, right, now you're holding yours, but turn it the other way around or something like that. Uh, it's so much easier for the patient to learn to use it than if you're trying to explain by phone, for example, how to take a temperature or, or mm. whatever. So, so that is really a uh, great added value. Uh, the respiratory nurses routinely check inhaler technique, peak flow, all sorts of things uh, 
through video consultations uh, in Scotland. I, I, I sat up in a couple of clinics with them and, and they're very, very good. So EGP learners, hope that explanation of the last eight second test by remote assessment with Dr. Trisha Greenhouse was useful. Catch you in the next episode.